We are the recipients of renewed insight into ancient mystery long forgotten. Forbidden knowledge written off as fairy tale by modern scholar steeped in the neoteric vision of evolution as scientific truth. We are the new seers long awaited by world, fated to return for promised unfolding, a special day and age, here to lead others to sunrise revival, wildly anticipating the second coming of our King and Messiah. The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord. Those worthy will be reinstated to serve new masters and dispense of authority during his reign. Some will judge the fallen angels, a new heaven and earth reborn from the purged remains of former world. Mountains leveled, the abyss risen to pave way for his triumphant reclamation. The rebel angels, fallen watchers, many shall murmur, gnashing teeth as prisoners, undone, awaiting his decree. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess as court ensues. Only he is worthy of such eminence. There has always been purpose resigned to the choices of those awaiting eternity as doorway to just reward. How many acted believing their actions carried no weight which would ever intrude upon their corrupted ways of being. The only question remaining is, what demeanor will you posture in that day of reckoning? Welcome, friends. I am your host, Zen Garcia. This is Fallen Angels TV. And today, I get to share with you one of my most favorite extra-biblical extra canonical text, one that aligns with revelation as found in the New Testament as the last book, the prophetic word of John as he saw and received vision while exiled to Patmos for the remainder of his life. And um, he was... I believe the only one that was not murdered by the forces aligned against the Most High and the establishment of church after the resurrection of our Savior Messiah. And so this particular text, it doesn't read as parable. It's almost like um, what one would find as explanation for the decipherment of the revelation that most of us are used to. Oh, Also, I want to announce that um, that I, I won't be doing a show next Saturday. I've got something that I need to do, as well as um, probably on the 26th. But any other time I should be here, and I'll be covering a lot of different texts. Um, Hello, Dr. Allison. I really appreciate your uh, email to me, and I will be sending you a follow-up very soon. Um my friend Link and Dolores and the other guests and those that will be coming. I know that I I appreciate all of you and thank you for your support and for um, actually listening to me and allowing me to 
share with you the things that I've come to know in study of all of these um, different texts. Because I, I think that's the only thing that makes my work really different from most others is that I have studied so many, you know, mo a lot that uh, not a lot of people have heard about. And um, and having researched all of that, uh, I'm able to, uh, because of the discernment that the Most High has led me to, I'm able to see the underlying truth between all of, not just all of these texts, but the ancient mysteries and, you know, the conspiracy side of uh, what we're dealing with as far as the Illuminists and uh, secret societies and New World Order. And so um, and so, I want to go ahead and get into this text. I'll share with you a link to where you can find it for yourself and read it for yourself. Um, I found this, this particular book so interesting and one that because not a lot of people had heard about it, uh, I included it in my fourth book, Lucifer, Father Cain, at the very end. I think it's that interesting and also that relevant for our being the last generation, you know, the the fig tree generation. Um, and so you're welcome to follow along. And for those that have not read it or have not studied it, I think your lives will be blessed by it. And so, because, uh, and we should be able to get through it um, all today in this one particular show. Oh, and also know that I will be, you know, that I will be doing the the Wednesday shows ongoing, that there will not be any disruption to to the um to those shows. All right. The revelation of Saint John the Theologian. After the taking up of our Lord Jesus Christ, I John was alone upon Mount Tabor, where also he showed us his undefiled Godhead, and as I was not able to stand, I fell upon the ground and prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, my God, who has deemed me worthy to be your servant, hear my voice and teach me about your coming. When you shall come to the earth, what will happen? The heaven and the earth and the sun and the moon, what will happen to them in those times? Reveal to me all, for I am emboldened because you listen to your servant. And I spent seven days praying, and after this a cloud of light caught me up from the mountain and set me before the face of the heaven. And I heard a voice saying to me, Look up, John, servant of God, and know. And having looked up, I saw the heaven open. And there came forth from within the heaven a smell of perfume of much sweet odor. And I saw an exceedingly great flood of light, more resplendent than the sun, and again I heard a voice saying to me, Behold, righteous John, and I directed my sight and saw a book lying on the thickness, methought, of seven mountains, and the length of it the mind of man cannot comprehend, having seven seals. And I said, O Lord my God, reveal to me what is written in this book. And I heard a voice saying to me, Here, righteous John, in this book which you see there have been written the things in the heaven and the things in the earth and the things in the abyss and the judgments and the righteous of all the human race. And I said, Lord, when shall these things come to pass? And what do these, what do those times bring? And I heard a voice saying to me, Hear, righteous John, there shall be in that time abundance of grain and wine, such as there has never been upon the earth, nor shall ever be until the times come. Then the ear of grain shall produce a half shonix, and the bend 
of the branch shall produce a thousand clusters. And the cluster shall produce a half jar of wine. And in the following year there shall not be found upon the face of all the earth a half shonix of grain or a half jar of wine. And again I said, Lord, thereafter what will you do? And I heard a voice saying to me, Here, righteous John, then shall appear the denier, and he who is set apart in the darkness who is called Antichrist. And again I said, Lord, reveal to me what he is like. And I heard a voice saying to me, The appearance of his face is dusky. The hairs of his head are sharp like darts. His eyebrows like a wild beast. His right eye like the star which rises in the morning. And the other like a lion's. His mouth about one cubit. His teeth span long, his fingers like sights, the print of his feet of two spans, and on his face an inscription, Antichrist. He shall be exalted even to heaven, and shall be cast down even to Hades, making false displays, and then will I make the heaven brazen, so that it shall not give moisture upon the earth, and I will hide the clouds in secret places, so that they shall not bring moisture upon the earth. And I will command the horns of the wind, so that the wind shall not blow upon the earth. And again, I said, Lord, in how many years will he do this upon the earth? And I heard a voice saying to me, Hear, righteous John, three years shall those times be. And I will make the three years like three months, and the three months like three weeks, and the three weeks like three days, and the three days like three hours, and the three hours like three seconds, as said the prophet David. His throne have you broken down to the ground. You have shortened the days of his time. You have poured shame upon him. And then I shall send forth Enoch and Elias to convict him, and they shall show him to be a liar and a deceiver, and he shall kill them at the altar, as he said, as said the prophet, then shall they offer calves upon your altar. I want to um, stop here for a second. This is one of those texts that in Skyfall I, I spoke about um Enoch and Elias and how they would be the two witnesses of Revelation 11 and that they would um they would be murdered by him and lie three and a half days in the streets of Jerusalem and then afterwards they would be raised up and their death and their lying there upon, you know, in the streets for three and a half days, that is significant of and corresponds to the Great Tribulation. The Tribulation is seven years long, and the last half of it, the three and a half years where the Antichrist um, prevails over the saints and there's much wickedness, this is when you know he openly is leader over and during this particular time and this is when uh Enoch and Elias will be murdered in the streets of Jerusalem and again i said lord and after that what will come to pass and i heard a voice saying to me here righteous john then all the human race shall die, and there shall not be a living man upon all the earth. And again I said, Lord, after that what will you do? And I heard a voice saying to me, Hear, righteous John, then will I send forth mine angels, and they shall take the ram's horn that lie upon the cloud, and Michael and Gabriel shall go forth out of the heaven and sound with those horns as the prophet David foretold. 
with the voice of a trumpet of horn, and the voice of the trumpet shall be heard from the one quarter of the world to the other. And from the voice of that trumpet, all the earth shall be shaken, as the prophet foretold. And at the voice of the bird, every plant shall arise. That is, at the voice of the archangel, all the human race shall arise. Um, Another thing that I'll talk about in the process of reading this particular text is um be, is how this portion and also revelation how they align with the fulfillment of the fall feast and because Yeshua's second coming um for those that have not heard the show that I that I did talking about how his life as well as his second coming would align with um, with the seven Levitical feasts, the ones that are found in chapter 23. Um, and uh, and again, for those that don't know, uh, Yeshua's incarnation in the flesh the first time fulfilled the the feast the feast days and the festivals of Passover, um, unleavened bread, and first fruits, as well as Pentecost. That's when the apostles were, um, you know, the Holy Spirit had come upon them. It is the summer festival of Pentecost, and His next return will fulfill this particular. And also, I'll go to the chat room and check those. If you have any questions or comments, I'll stop in you know as I go through the text. And so this particular uh, this passage here, where it speaks of, then will I send forth mine angels, and they shall take the ransom. That aligns with the feast of trumpets, which is on the first of um, the first day of Tishri the first month uh, first day of the month of Tishri and if you don't know uh, as i explained um all of the months on god's calendar they begin with what is called in hebrew the kadesh uh the time of the new moon new moon day and new moon day is determined by when the moon becomes 7% full that it has um which is you know like one of the very first phases of the first quarter moon and so when it is 7% full or what Enoch calls a a half of a 14th portion or half of a 7th portion then that day is called um Kadesh and is referred to as the new moon day and it is on this day because it was the duty of the high priest to determine when new moon day occurred and then the shofar the ram's horn would be blown across the land of Israel during ancient times and this way the people would know that it was a new month and also the first Sabbath of the month, because every new moon day is also the first Sabbath of the month. And so the blowing of the shofar um, is, you know, is what determined when that day occurred. And it's also, you know, aligns. That's why it's called the Feast of Trumpets. Um, that particular feast day festival aligns with the sounding of that horn. And that will be fulfilled when, um, as it says here, Gabriel and Michael sound the horn and also declare that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of um, Yeshua. 
And also at the very beginning of the passage where it says, And I heard a voice saying to me, Here, righteous John, then all the human race shall die, and there shall not be a living man upon the earth. It's my opinion that this is um, this event happens before the recreation of the new heaven and the new earth, and that uh, it's not something that happens before the sounding of the trumpets, as um, that what he's talking about over the next series of chapters it leads up to this particular event, and this you know that all of there will be no living creature upon the earth um before the earth is recreated and it's destroyed by fire as it says in second peter and so um and that's why when you have these trumpets sounding that that is when the resurrection I mean, not the resurrection, but, you know, well, yeah, the resurrection uh, of all flesh, that that happens. But in my opinion, this is also when the rapture occurs or what people uh, refer to as the rapture or the, um, you know, when the saints are caught up. And so keep that in mind when we go through this text and um, it'll, it'll help you to understand it better. Okay, continuing. And then I'll tell you as we go through um, when the, these particular passages align with the fall feasts as they will be fulfilled by Yeshua. Because the next one is the Day of Atonement. And it's my opinion that that one aligns with when he takes his judgment seat. All right, continuing. And again I said, Lord, those who are dead from Adam even to this day and who dwell in Hades from the beginning of the world and who die at the last ages, what light shall they arise? And I heard a voice saying to me, Here, righteous John, all the human race shall arise 30 years old. Now these next passages are interesting because they speak of um, our glorified when we are, you know, put into our glorified bodies and that we will be, you know, around the semblance of the age would be uh, 30 years, which is, you know, I find to be interesting. And again, I said, Lord, they die male and female and some old and some young and some infants. In the resurrection, what light shall they arise? And I heard a voice saying to me, Here, righteous John, just as the bees are and differ not one from another, but are all of one appearance and one size, so also shall every man be in the resurrection. There is neither fair nor ruddy nor black, neither Ethiopian, nor different countenances, but they shall all arise of one appearance and one stature. All the human race shall arise without bodies, as I told you that in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God. Um, in my opinion, there still is individuality, but that, because um, even with bees, you know, they even though they all look the same, there are still differences. Even with, you know, all the creatures, um, there's like individual differences. And so it's not that we're going to be clones of each other, but that we will all be an, you know, angelic, as I spoke about um, in my previous books, that we, you know, our bright nature, we will be restored to immortality, uh, restored to our bright nature, and that in this, this bright nature has to corresponds with our being returned to our angelic form. Meaning, you know, and that we are neither male or female. Even with Adam and Eve, before Eve was split off from him, he was male and female. And the angels, as um, as I've stated in my books, they are both sexes, male and female. And they don't have 
you know, genitalia because all that is unnecessary. So, um, so angels are hermaphroditic and they're whole in their um, in their oneness as being both male and female. All right, continuing. And again, I said, Lord, is it possible in that world to recognize each other? A brother, his brother, or a friend, his friend, or a father, his own children, or the children, their own parents. And I heard a voice saying to me, here, John, to the righteous there is recognition, but to the sinners not at all. They cannot in the resurrection recognize each other. And again, I don't see here, um, I believe this is um, confirmation that we have still individuality even though we are put in our glorified bodies. We can still recognize um, each other as, you know, our parents or those of us that are kin um, that know each other and have known each other. And how that all plays out exactly, of course, we won't know until we get to that time, but um, it is my opinion, you know, as it states here, that we still have individuality and characteristic, which makes us different, even though we are all returned to our angelic state of being. Well, those that are counted uh, among the righteous. And again, I, John, said, Lord, is there recollection of the things that are here? either fields of vineyards or other things here. And I heard a voice saying to me, Here, righteous John, the prophet David speaks, saying, I remembered that we are dust, as for man his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he shall flourish. For a wind has passed over it, and it shall be no more, and it shall not any longer know its place. And again the same said, His spirit shall go forth, and he returns to his earth, and in that day all his thoughts shall perish. As far as recollection, the recollection of this earth or particular places upon it, the earth is going to be recreated, and it will be reformed as level. And that's what it speaks about as being the mountains brought low and the uh, oceans brought high. Uh, it will detail this more in you know, the following passages. Um, And and you'll understand more of why it does that, because those passages in the biblical text didn't make sense to me until I read this particular um, book, and then it, it, you know, all fell into alignment. All right, just a couple passages, and then I'll check the chat room uh, if you have any question or commentary and again I said Lord and after that what will you do and I heard a voice saying to me here righteous John then will I send forth mine angels over the face of all the earth and they shall lift off the earth everything honorable and everything precious and the venerable and holy images and the glorious and precious crosses and the sacred vessels of the churches and the divine and sacred books And all the precious and holy things shall be lifted up by clouds into the air. And then will I order to be lifted up the great and venerable scepter on which I stretch forth my hands and all the orders of my angels shall do reverence to it. And then shall be lifted up all the race of men upon clouds as the Apostle Paul foretold. Along with them we shall be snatched up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and then shall come forth every evil spirit, both in the earth and in the abyss, wherever they are on the face of all the earth, from the rising of the sun even to the setting, and they shall be united to him that is served by the devil, that is Antichrist, and they shall be lifted up upon the clouds. Now, This, um, the way that this scriptures uh, and and also Revelation, the way that they play out, they make me think and um, 
consider that perhaps the trumpet, the feast of trumpet, and the rapture that it occurs during mid tribulation, um, and that you know before the the wrath of and maybe perhaps the wrath of God being poured out on those not written into the book of life, that that occurs with, you know, during the latter half of the tribulation, what people refer to as the great tribulation. Um, You know, possibility, whether that is true or not, um, I, I don't know for certain, but that's my thinking as to um, the way that this plays out as far as the scripture and the way that it is worded. And you know how it says that we are not appointed to wrath. um, And that, you know, again, that wrath is my opinion, the day of the Lord, when the wrath of God, the true wrath of God is poured out on those not written into the book of life. And that this is also when the locust army is brought to sting those that seek death but cannot find it. And that's also when it says um, in the the scriptures that the those that are hiding out in these deep underground bases that believe they can escape from the wrath of the Most High God, uh, with Yeshua's second coming, that they will ask the rocks to fall upon them. Again, this is all just my opinion, but um, it seems to also align with, you know, the the seven feasts, because if the rapture happens on the um, on the feast of trumpets, on what would be, you know, like symbolically or metaphorically on the seventh the first day of the seventh month and then there's a a a period of time of 10 days until the day of atonement and in my opinion that is significant and represents a a space of time perhaps when the um when the wrath of god is being poured out on the wicked and then after you know, after that occurs and um, and then when the earth, because it's between, it's somewhere in between the Feast of Trumpets and the Day of Atonement, according to the fulfillment of those fall feasts, that the earth is recreated cause, and the heavens are recreated because um, that has to happen before Yeshua actually comes down upon the earth and takes his judgment seat and then and then all the knees you know every knee shall bow and every tongue confess and all the race you know all the human race uh dies before that time because when the earth is recreated it is destroyed by fire and reformed like a phoenix you know reborn like a phoenix from from the ashes. And again, as I said, as we go through this um this text, you'll see how that plays out. And it also seems to align with what is metaphorically depicted by the book of Revelations uh in the New Testament. All right, one more paragraph and then I'll check the chat room. I just want to make sure I can get through this and you know it all in this one show. Actually, let me read two more paragraphs and then I'll look. And again I said, "Lord, and after that what will you do?" And I heard a voice saying to me, "Here, righteous John, then shall I send forth mine angels over the face of all the earth, and they shall burn up the earth 8,500 cubits." And the great mountains shall be burned up, and all the rocks shall be melted, and shall become as dust. 
and every tree shall be burned up, and every beast, and every creeping thing creeping upon the earth, and everything moving upon the face of the earth, and every flying thing flying in the air. And there shall no longer be upon the face of all the earth anything moving, and the earth shall be without motion. And again I said, Lord, and after that what will you do? And I heard a voice saying to me, Here, righteous John, then shall I uncover the four parts of the east, and there shall come forth four great winds, and they shall sweep all the face of the earth from the one end of the earth to the other. And the Lord shall sweep sin from off the earth, and the earth shall be made white like snow, and it shall become as a leaf of paper without cave or mountain or hill or rock. But the face of the earth from the rising even to the setting of the sun shall be like a table and white as snow. And the rains of the earth shall be consumed by fire, and it shall cry unto me, saying, I am a virgin before you, O Lord, and there is no sin in me, as the prophet David said aforetime. You shall sprinkle me with hyssop, and I shall be made pure. You shall wash me, and I shall be made whiter than snow. And again he said, Every chasm shall be filled up, and every mountain and hill brought low, and the crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough ways into smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. And so this, again, uh, as I stated earlier, this is in preparation for his return, his actually coming down. Not his second coming, because, you know, he comes and destroys uh, all the the evil and wicked and and also pours out the wrath, uh, his wrath upon the wicked and the, you know, the earth, um, those not written into the books of life. And then the earth and the heavens are, you know, the earth is destroyed in preparation for his actually coming down upon it. All right, let me check the chat room real quick. All right, there's a comment in the chat room uh, saying that we were created by the Anunnaki, and that is not true. The Anunnaki created the what's referred to as the primitive worker, and they manipulated and experimented upon this Bigfoot-type creature, and they were able to um, to change and alter him it in such way that it did become um sort of like you know a more closer resemblance to modern man but still it was not mo- modern humanity modern humanity was created by the most high god Yahweh Elohim and um we were created in the image of Yeshua and that's why there's a difference between the Neanderthal, Cro-Magnon, and the pre-Adamic humans um, and modern man that suddenly just came upon the scene. Uh, And that's the difference. You may believe, and a lot of people do, Flycatcher, that we were created by the Anunnaki, but that is uh, absolutely false. It's a it's a fallacy, and a lot of people are caught up in it. And it's part of the strong delusion that the Bible warns us about and tells us that, um, you know, many in this day and age at the end of days would believe that Satan had created us as the Anunnaki, the Satan and 
of the rebel angels that they created us. All right, continuing. And again, I said, Lord, and after that, what will you do? And I heard a voice saying to me, here, I just done. Then shall the earth be cleansed from sin. Oh, did I read this? Oh, no, I didn't. And all the earth shall be filled with a sweet smell, because I am about to come down upon the earth. And then shall come forth the great and venerable scepter, with thousands of angels worshiping it, as I said before. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man, from the heaven with power and great glory. And then the worker of iniquity with his servants shall behold it and gnash his teeth exceedingly. And all the unclean spirits shall be turned to flight and then seized by invisible power. Having no means of flight, they shall gnash their teeth against him, saying to him, Where is your power? Have you led us astray? And we have fled away and have fallen away from the glory which we had beside him who was coming to judge us and the whole human race. Woe to us, because he banishes us into outer darkness. Flycatch, this is exactly what all of those of you that believe that Satan and the rebel angels or the Anunnaki created us, this is exactly what those that believe that strong delusion will say in that day and age, how we have been deceived and led astray. All right, continuing. And again, I said, Lord, uh, also, um, Flycatch, I would recommend you read my six book, Sons of God, because I detail the difference between the primitive worker and the civilized man, the two creations of uh, Genesis, um, chapter 1 and 2, because there is a difference. All right. And again, I said, Lord, and after that, what will you do? And I heard a voice saying to me, oh, one last thing. Uh, Flycatch, I also, just so you know, I share in that book not only the biblical scriptures, but all of the Sumerian scriptures or passages um, as well from both sides. And so you can understand it better. Then will I send an angel out of heaven, and he shall cry with a loud voice, saying, Hear, O earth, and be strong, says the Lord, for I am coming down to you. And the voice of the angel shall be heard from the one end of the world even to the other, and even to the remotest part of the abyss. And then shall be shaken all the power of the angels and of the abyss, and of the many-eyed ones, and there shall be a great noise and The heavens and the nine regions of the heavens of heaven shall be shaken and there shall be fear and astonishment upon all the angels. And then the heavens shall be rent from the rising of the sun even to the setting and an innumerable multitude of angels shall come down to the earth and then the treasures of the heavens shall be opened and they shall bring down every precious thing and the perfume of incense, and they shall bring down to the earth Jerusalem robed like a bride. So this particular part aligns with Revelation chapter 21, where it speaks about the new Jerusalem coming down to the earth. Um, Same thing, in that that occurs, in my opinion, as preparation for the Feast of Tabernacles. Because the Feast of Tabernacles is um, is celebrated because during the 40 years of wandering, the Israelites, they had to live in temporary dwellings. And they had to live in houses that they could quickly uh, create and you know, throw up four walls and then cover it with palm um 
the branches of palms that they found, you know, just anywhere lying in the, on the ground. And the Feast or Tabernacles is when we no longer have to live in temporary housing, but we will be allowed to inhabit as permanent home New Jerusalem. And it also represents our not having to live in flesh, which is a temporary housing for our spirits. All right. And then there shall go before my myriads of angels and archangels, bearing my throne, crying out, crying out, Holy, 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 Lord of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of your glory. For those that don't know, Sabaoth um, is, you know, the god of Sabbath, uh, is, a, is a Gnostic reference for Yeshua. When you read the Nag Hammadi Codices, it speaks about um, the Lord of Hosts, the, you know, the the God Sabaoth, which is Yeshua. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. And then will I come forth with power and great glory and every eye in the cloud. Clouds shall see me and then every knee shall bend of things in heaven and things on the earth and things under the earth. And then the heavens shall remain empty and I will come down upon the earth and all that is in the air shall be brought down upon the earth and all the human race and every evil spirit along with Antichrist and they shall all be set before me naked and chained by the neck. And again I said, so this is the judgment seat and this would uh, align with the Day of Atonement. And so when Yeshua takes the judgment seat, that will fulfill the the Day of Atonement. And again I said, Lord, what will become of the heavens and the sun and the moon along with the stars? And I heard a voice saying to me, Behold, righteous John. And I looked and I saw a lamb having seven eyes and seven horns and again I heard a voice saying to me, I will bid the Lamb come before me, and I will say, Who will open this book? And all the multitudes of the angels will answer, Give this book to the Lamb to open it, and then will I order the books to be opened. And when he shall open the first seal, the stars of the heavens shall fall from the one end of it to the other. And when he shall open the second seal, the moon shall be hidden, and there shall be no light in her. And when he shall open the third seal, the light of the sun shall be withheld, and there shall not be light upon the earth. And when he shall open the fourth seal, the heavens shall be dissolved, and the air shall be thrown into utter confusion. As says the prophet, And the heavens are the works of your hands, they shall perish, but you endure, and they shall all wax old as a garment. And when he shall open the fifth seal, the earth shall be rent, and all the tribunals upon the face of all the earth shall be revealed. And when he shall open the sixth seal, the half of the sea shall disappear. And when he shall open the seventh seal, Hades shall be uncovered. And I said, Lord, who will be the first to be questioned? And to receive judgment. And I heard a voice saying to me. The unclean spirits along with the adversary. I bid them go into outer darkness. Where the depths are. And I said Lord. And in what place does it lie? And I heard a voice saying to me. Here righteous John. As big a stone as a man of 30 years old can roll. And let go down into the depth even falling down for 20 years, will not arrive at the bottom of Hades, as the prophet David said before, and he made darkness his secret place. And I said, Lord, and after them, what nation shall be questioned? And I heard a voice saying to me, Here, righteous John, there will be questioned of Adam's race, those nations, both the Greek and those who have believed in idols, 
and in the sun and in the stars and those who have defiled the faith by heresy and who have not believed the holy resurrection and who have not confessed the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Then will I send them away into Hades as the prophet David foretold. Let the sinners be turned into Hades and all the nations that forgot forget God. And again he said, they were put in Hades like sheep. Death shall be their shepherd. And again I said, Lord, and after them who will you judge? And I heard a voice saying to me, Hear, righteous John. Then the race of the Hebrews shall be examined, who nailed me to the tree like a malefactor. And I said, And what punishment will these get? And in what place, seeing that they did such things to you? And I heard a voice saying to me, They shall go away into Tartarus, as the prophet David foretold. They cried out, and there was none to save. To the Lord, and he did not hearken to them. And again the Apostle Paul said, As many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in law shall be judged by means of law. And again I said, Lord, and what of those who have received baptism? And I heard a voice saying to me, Then the race of the Christians shall be examined, who have received baptism. And then the righteous shall come at my commandment. And the angels shall go and collect them from among the sinners, as the prophet David foretold. The Lord will not suffer the rod of the sinners and the lot of the righteous. And all the righteous shall be placed on my right hand and shall shine like the sun. As you see, John, the stars of heaven that they were all made together, but differ in light, so shall it be with the righteous and the sinners. For the righteous shall shine as lights and as the sun, but the sinners shall stand in darkness. Um, another thing really quick. It's interesting also that there's a an ancient belief that the spirits, the souls of stars, that they correspond to the angelic spirit or soul of humanity. And that um that as many as number the stars in heaven, so do the um, those that incarnate into flesh the same, the, the, all of the human race that they number the same. And there's a, a passage in Revelation where it speaks of um, stars being cast down at the end of days, shaken uh, as if they were, you know, shrugged off of, of a fig tree. And that um, that these stars would, at the end of days, that they would also be part of the judgment against the wicked, those not written into the book of life. And I always thought about, you know, the four angels that are released from your River Euphrates, um, the locust army, uh, Joel chapter 2, where it speaks of, this formidable race uh, that those that had destroyed the earth that was a wilderness before them, but was just, you know, that was a fruitful place before them, uh, but a destroyed wilderness after them, and that could climb upon the walls, and even when they fell upon the sword, they did not succumb to death that these things are speaking of a, you know, the return of a supernatural army. And that it will be a, super, you know, and you could equate them with being the Anunnaki or the return of, a Neph of the Nephilim. Because um, it's all the same thing. It's all the same thing. There's no difference. What the scriptures speak about as the, rebel angels and the fall of the watchers 
it's the same thing as what so many um yeah as far as the Anunnaki or what other cuz other nations and civilizations they revere dragons or serpents or a feathered serpent or um or winged serpents you know um they're all the same thing they embody the same thing it's the nakash of genesis chapter 3 it's the uh, the ancient dragon that old serpent known as the devil and satan he who deceiveth the whole world as it says in revelation 12 and that's why in my opinion it's so very important to study the scriptures and to understand them because it's only within them that you get the truth that you are told the truth about these liars and these deceivers and if you don't study them like our friend flycatch in the chat room you will get caught up in believing the strong delusion that the Anunnaki created us and that um, they are our gods. And this would also have you deny our true creator and that the son, that he sent his son as John chapter 3, verse 16, that very well-known verse, um, that the Most I sent His only begotten Son to uh, to die for the sins of humanity and to give us uh, redemption and a chance to return to our former estate. Remember from whence thou art fallen. All of these things um, are are found and are the truth of the Word why it's important to study the gospel because the gospels are divinely inspired and they are the inherent word of our creator and the things that they portray the discernment that they share can help us to realize the lie the deception of the pagan beliefs all because all of the pagan cultures that worship a pantheon of gods and goddesses um, they are worshiping the rebel angels they are worshiping the Anunnaki the Nephilim the sons of God that were cast out that went to war against the Most High against the Son in order to try to overthrow them and to be as gods themselves. You know, the whole declaration of Lucifer, I will exalt, you know, I will be like the Most High, all that. All right, let me finish up. Um, the Lord will not suffer the rod of the sinners and the lot of the righteous, and all the righteous shall be placed on my right hand and shall shine like the sun. As you see, John, the stars of heaven, that they were all made together but differ in light. So shall it be with the righteous and the sinners, for the righteous shall shine as lights, as, as the sun, but the sinners shall stand in darkness. And again I said, Lord, and do all the Christians go into one punishment? Kings, high priests, priests, patriarchs, rich and poor, Bond and free. And I heard a voice saying to me, Here, righteous John, as the prophet David foretold, the expectations of the poor shall not perish forever. Now, about kings, because we know the kings are aligned with the seed of Cain and that they are uh, tied together with the agenda of the New World Order and that they worship as these secret societies they worship Lucifer as the light bearer and that they believe he did a good thing in giving us a free will you know the free will to experience both good and evil um uh 
Okay. And uh, now about kings, they shall be driven like slaves, and shall weep like infants. And about patriarchs and priests and Levites, of those that have sinned, they shall be separated in their punishment according to the nature of the peculiar transgression of each, some in the river of fire and some to the worm that dies not, and others in the seven-mouthed pit of punishment. To these punishments the sinners will be apportioned. If you want to know more about those particular individual sins and their apportionment, I recommend that people study the vision of Paul and the apocalypse of Peter because they detail the levels of Sheol, Hell, and Tartarus more than any other book I've studied as far as extra-biblical, biblical, extra-canonical. They give great detail. The vision of Paul, again, is one of my favorites. And it describes in detail the place of the righteous and the place of the wicked, as well as New Jerusalem as the city of God. Incredible book. Um, It's quite lengthy, but well worth studying and reading. And again, I said, Lord, and where will the righteous dwell? And I heard a voice saying to me, Then shall paradise be revealed. And the whole world and paradise shall be made one. And the righteous shall be on the face of all the earth with my angels as the Holy Spirit foretold through the prophet David. The righteous shall inherit the earth and dwell therein forever and ever. Um, Because we have time, I want to share this comment with you. This, in my opinion verifies and give conf- and gives confirmation as to the the chapter that I wrote in my fourth book Lucifer Father of Cain which differentiates between paradise and the garden of evil uh garden of eden and that paradise is where adam was placed after his creation And this is where um, both Adam and Eve had fallen from. It's where they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And that tree is resulted in their loss of immortality. It resulted in their loss of their bright nature. And they're being cast out here to the earth, placed in the cave of treasures, that that would be their home. And the surrounding area is what we know of as the Garden of Eden. That there's a, a grand difference as between these two places. And that once they were exiled from paradise and placed here in the cave of treasures, in you know around the garden of eden that they were de- transformed into flesh and this is where eve uh, here upon the earth this is where she was beguiled by satan and impregnated with cain and that's where the enmity between the seed lines would happen here upon the earth because both Cain and Abel were born here after she was transformed into flesh. And so when we're returned to our bright-natured, immortal, angelic selves, then we will be allowed again into paradise. And in this case, paradise is going to be brought down from the third heaven and merged with the recreated earth. And that it would be recreated, and as it says in this text, made flat, holy, and white in preparation for 
Yeshua. And it would be here upon the earth that he would dwell with us for a thousand years for the millennial reign. All right, continuing. And then after I finish, I'm almost done with the text, and after that I'll check the chat room for a final commentary. And again I said, Lord, how great is the multitude of the angels, and which is the greater, that of angels or of men? And I heard a voice saying to me, as great as is the multitude of the angels, so great is the race of men. As the prophet has said, he set bounds to the nations according to the number of the angels of God. And so there, you know, again, is allusion to that um, that equivalence that as are there the number of stars in the um, in you know the the heavens that that would perhaps that equates to the number of the children of flesh those that would be born into human bodies and that um because we know our we were it was our angelic our bright nature when we were sons of god it's our angelic spirits that enter into our bodies just as it says in jeremiah you know chapter 1 verse 5 where Yeshua says to Jeremiah that uh, I knew you before you entered into the womb of your mother. And that he had known him um, before all that. Same thing with us. All of that, all of what it says in relation to these saints uh, is same thing with us. Uh, our being predestinated, uh, our election, um, our pre-existence it's all this, the same with all of us it all works the same way why would it be different for one uh, how is it you know why would it be I mean would the most I just create a whole different system of existence for one particular person and have it not apply to everybody doesn't make sense all right Last couple of paragraphs. And again I said, Lord, and after that what will you do? And what is to become of the world? Reveal to me all. And I heard a voice saying to me, Here, righteous John, after that there is no pain, there is no grief, there is no groaning, there is no recollection of evils, there are no tears, there is no envy. There is no hatred of brethren. There is no unrighteousness. There is no arrogance. There is no slander. There is no bitterness. There are none of the cares of life. There is no pain from parents or children. There is no pain from gold. There are no wicked thoughts. There is no devil and there is no death. There is no night, but all is day. And as I said before, and other sheep I have which are not of this fold, that is, men who have been made like the angels through their excellent course of life, them also must I bring, and they will hear my voice, and there shall be one fold, one shepherd. And so the saints who are now returned to their former bright-natured, angelic self, selves, those that are dwelling and have been placed into New Jerusalem with the first resurrection. Um, if you want to know more about this, you can read this in the Gospel of Nicodemus in the second part where it speaks of the descent into hell. Because when Yeshua was three days away from his body, he went down into hell, and for what's 
called the first resurrection, he took Adam to all and all the patriarchs that had died previous to his crucifixion and to his death. He took them up to paradise. They were baptized in the Arcturusian Lake by the Archangel Michael. And then they were allowed to enter into the city of God. The Arcturusian Lake is the gulf between the place of the righteous and the place of the wicked. And um, and you can find more about this, again, as in that text, The Vision of Paul. Very, it's an incredible, incredible text. And so they will, as it says, you know, um, in Enoch, I will return with seven seventy thousand of my angels um, and, and the saints. It's this is what it's referring to. Not only the angels like Michael and Gabriel and Uriel and Phanuel and the others, but also the saints that have been restored to their glory, that are in their glorified bodies now. And this is what we will be returned to as long as we are counted with the elect and worthy of a return to our former state. And I pray that all of us are. And, I, and again, I heard a voice saying to me, Behold, you have heard all these things, righteous John. Deliver, deliver them to faithful men that they also may teach others. And not think lightly of them, nor cast our pearls before swine, lest perchance they should trample them with their feet. This um, lines up with, you know, we should just not, we should not just talk about these things with everybody, um, because not everybody's worthy. But those that are interested and that um, are seeking guidance and hunger for truth and that can handle the meat, share with them. You can tell, you know, you can gauge with um, who's worthy and who's ready to hear because not all are. And, um, and we should be somewhat selective. And if you're not certain, then start with the basics. You know, you can drop hints, and then you can gauge through conversation where where others are, where they stand with their knowledge and with their understanding of truth, and with their, you know, progression as being Christians. Last paragraph. And while I was still hearing this voice, the cloud brought me down and put me on Mount Thabor. And there came a voice to me saying, Blessed are those who keep judgment and do righteousness in all time. And blessed is the house where this description lies. As the Lord said, He that loves me keeps my saying, In Christ Jesus our Lord, to him be glory forever. Amen. All right. Okay, um, I was just looking, Flycatch says, we were created by the Anunnaki, but the question is who created them? The modern day problem facing Christians of this era is how do we defeat Islam, the cult of death and destruction? If you believe in the Bible, then you have no free will since your life has already been written. No, that's not true at all. Um, we absolutely have free will. And that's why we are here, is to, um, is to determine whether we want to be 
counted with the elect or with the wicked. Our behaviors, our actions, our thoughts, our intents, the way that we are, the things that we do, all of this determines whether we are aligned with Yeshua or with Satan. You can't serve two masters. You have to make a choice. And whereas during the war in heaven we were able to, you know, basically ride the 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 thin line and not choose one way or the other and that um not choosing is one of the reasons why so many find ourselves incarnated into flesh form now. We are not able to ride this middle road anymore. You can't just sit on the fence. You have to make a choice. Because um, as it says in Revelation, those that are lukewarm will be spewed out. We will be counted with the wicked if we do not choose to be in alignment and as servants to Yeshua and to humanity and to each other. Uh, just as um, Yeshua said, uh, love God uh, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. And that's the fullness of the law. Those things, um, those two things can help us to stay in alignment with the Ten Commandments, which are given to us in order to guide us in living right in righteousness. All right, uh, let me see. Walking in Truth says, I am. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Yeah, he's given us definitely chance um, and allowed the possibility of all things. But humanity and the rebel angels, the fallen watchers, it's our wickedness that has created and perpetuated evil. And here on this this earth, in this duality, in this fallen state of being, in this flesh form, we are given the chance to experience good and evil. But I tell you what, I am ready for... Um, uh, to be part of existence where there is no longer any need for death, suffering, pain, growing old, or, or being born, or having to in any way experience or see or hear about or know the kind of evil we see perpetuated on the news every day. I'll be glad to not ever have to be counted um, as part of that kind of existence anymore. And that if we, and myself, if we can all aspire to be counted with the elect, and, and the elect is few. Um, it's a very small portion. And so many believe that, you know, they are, worthy and that they are going to be, you know, um, returned to their former estate. But Yeshua says, um, away from me, you workers of iniquity, I know you not. In that day, so many will say, you know, I did these things, I, um, I believed myself to be righteous, and we are not. You know, they they are not. And so with our free will, with our lives, with our existence, with the things that we have chance and opportunity to do, with the possibilities of this life now, with the things that we do every day, we should try to, in every way, uphold the commandments and do good unto each other. And try to help others to come to remembrance, come to understanding, and and to embrace these teachings, to embrace the gospel as truth, because it's 
you know, the inherent word of God helps us to understand the difference between um, the strong delusion and the truth. Because so many are caught up in the strong delusion and do believe, as Flycatch does, that the Anunnaki created us, that they are our creators. And even though he says, you know, as Christians, um, because he believes himself to be a Christian, even though he um, believes the Anunnaki created us, uh, he says that who created them? Yeah, absolutely, the Most High created them. They are angels, the fallen angels of the Most High, those that joined Lucifer in rebellion and went to war against the Son uh, during the war in heaven. And for that, they were cast out. It, Lucifer doesn't have his own angels. He himself is an angel of the Most High. The Most High created all of them. Lucifer didn't create his own angels. He is one of the many. We also are the sons of God that were created in semblance in similar um, image. And so, anyways, I pray that the Most High bless all of you, and I'll see you next Wednesday. Again, remember, there's not a show next week, next Saturday, um, but I'll return the following after that. God bless all. Good night.